demonic spirits to do what? To wield their influence and oppression over you. That's how powerful the tongue is. You speak faith and power through the, power, the word of God, then the angels of God will spring into action. You confess negative words, then the demonic spirits and Satan will take over and influence your life. Like our sister. You know, she's attacked by a, a visible enemy, the thieves and the thugs, but she was confessing the word that she had you know, read in the Bible, the scripture. The fact that she was feeling peace and calmness, it shows us that there were angels in that place. And the fact that she confessed the word, it empowered the angels to remain in control over the whole situation. I mean, who can rob you and then say, Oh, thank you for humble signs. Okay. I think if it was me, I would tell them, okay, you're welcome again. <laughs> we have a caribou tent. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. You know, that shows you that actually the, the invisible realm is active. And your tongue has the power to influence whether the negative powers or the positive powers will be at play in your life. That's why the tongue is a fire. Amen? Yeah. So, in closing, when we say that, you know, you have to control your tongue. Why? Because it sets the direction of your life and it creates the atmosphere. When we say that, what does it really mean <coughs> for you? <coughs> the last thing we need to know is that the tongue is actually a slave. Okay? The tongue is not the source of the things that you speak and the things that you say. Here he says that no man can control the tongue. In other words, you cannot control the tongue. So if you cannot control the tongue, what should you do? And it keeps on spewing out the wrong things. And he says here that the tongue is actually neutral. In what sense? The tongue can do positive things and negative things. Like the tongue can praise God and it can curse people. That's why at times when you open your mouth, mouth, it will either make people feel good or they'll feel bad about themselves. That shows that the tongue is actually an instrument. It's a puppet, if you will. According to Matthew chapter 12, Jesus shows us that what controls the tongue is the heart. Okay? He says what controls the tongue is the heart. He says that when you make the tree good, its fruits will be good. When you make the tree bad, its fruit will be bad. So if you want to, your tongue to be you know, fruitful and to bless other people, you have to deal with your heart. I remember, how do we make our the tree good or the tree bad, meaning the heart. I remember one time I sat for one week from morning to evening watching movies, especially those black American movies. And you know the kind of language that they use. At the end of the seven days, I noticed something that my tongue had changed. I'll meet with people and I'm like, hey, what's up, you man? You know what I mean? <laughs> What's up, ma? You know, my mother is like, okay, where did that come from? And I noticed that I was, you know, I was sort of like twins that like them, but I will also curse like they do. I will use the f bombs and the, all those nasty words. And then I thought to myself, I'm a Christian. How did I get to a place where I'm saying these words? They're just pouring out of me. And I noticed 
I made my tree bad. So what do you expose yourself to? Do you have any filters that will ensure that whatever gets into your heart is filtered off if it is bad and it, is, it seeps through if it is good? You'll need for you to wash your mouth, for you to have a different tongue. You may need to revise whatever you are allowing to go through your eyes and your ears. You may need to stop watching some movies or hanging out with certain friends. And you may need to start intentionally reading the Bible, memorizing it, studying it, so that it will fill your heart with the good stuff. Because the tongue, the tongue is just a slave. Garbage in, garbage out. And it will just pour out anything that you put in. It won't give you something different. No, it will give you what you threw in them. So, what is the lesson for you from all this? I would like you to know or just to repeat what I've said, is that your tongue is a solemn responsibility. And you are responsible for your tongue. And that your tongue is a puppet of your heart. Now, suppose you just took care that you said a negative word. What should you do with that? You should actually do an autopsy. <laughs> and it will tell you that, okay, Maybe the things that are in your heart, you need to deal with them, okay? You find yourself flirting with the secretaries and other girls, dogodogos, and you find like, oh, I don't want to flirt, but I just find myself flirting. Then it means that in your heart, there is probably adultery. In your heart, there is lust. And therefore, as long as that lust is there, your tongue will try to bend it in another way, but it will swing lastfully. So, deal with the last in the heart. If the last in the heart is out, the tongue will never give you such episodes. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and always remember that the tongue sets the direction for your life, and also it creates the atmosphere that you live in, whether joyful or miserable. Just remember that you need the grace of God. You need to always tell God, you know what, God, without your grace, I cannot control my tongue. So search my heart and help me to deal with those things that are on the inside so that whatever I speak, I say the right things. Before I counsel anyone, May your spirit guide me on what to say and how to say it. Well, folks, I uh, think that's the end of my message today. And may God bless you all. <laughs> Mouthwash powerful, timely message. Thank you, Pastor Ken, and thank you, Mercy, for pastoring Ken. We want to get into a time of Holy Communion. We've covered 26 weeks, and even as we are doing the Holy Communion here at Nairobi Chapel, Karen, we do an open communion. What that means is if you are a believer, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you partake of the communion in your respective churches, for those who are visiting with us, then you are welcome to partake of the communion. And I'll call upon the I'll call upon the those who are serving the communion to go ahead and and pass the, the elements. But even as you receive the element, please, as you receive the bread and the drink, we will partake of it together. We will partake of it together.
as we partake of the Holy Communion, how do we apply this to the message from our brother Ken this morning? Some of us are seated here and people without the mouthwash have dirtified you with their bad breath by uttering careless words. The flip side of the coin, maybe there are moments that you have also flushed people with a bad breath because you didn't use the mouthwash. I think there is no better mouthwash than the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So as we partake of the communion this morning, look back, look back, and if you are driving, you are looking at the rear mirror, just look back. Are there people who have wounded you through the words of their mouth? Do some business with the Lord. Just talk to God and say, Father, I release these people who have hurt me. And the other side of the coin, the Lord will drop names into your heart. People that you know for sure you also hurt. Then also just take a moment to confess. So let me, once you receive that, just do some business with the Lord. <clears throat> half of the year has been <clears throat> but the creator of the universe, the Lord Jesus knows each and every one of us by name maybe the first half of the year has been very difficult for you and you do not know what tomorrow holds Jesus knows one of my mentors, my uncle the only surviving brother to my mom there were eight of them, but the others have died. So my mom and, 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 her, and her brother, they, so my mom is the second last. And my uncle was the last born, mark my words, was the last born. My husband, my, my uncle, as he was working on the farm, he stepped on a, on a thorn. And then so there was a wound, and that wound was just spreading. He was taken to the hospital, then they had to do other tests. Then they discovered that he was diabetic. On Wednesday, this last week, the leg was amputated. This is a teacher for many years, and he was our role model. Then last evening at 10 o'clock, I got a call from my brother. I've just spoken to mom. Uncle Anthony is no you are confused. You do not know where to turn to. But you say, Father, thank you for this far we've been with Uncle Anthony. I don't know what your first half of the year has been, 
But at the cross of Jesus, there is healing. My mom tried calling me. It's very difficult. Men, we say men don't cry. You cry in the bathroom as you look up so that the tears fall on the inside. <laughs> but friends, it's very, very difficult when your mom is calling you kilometers away and she's crying. Because you can imagine her world. Grumbled, you know, nothing. But I just told mom, God is the closest friend at this particular point. God will go ahead of us in the next, in the future. So as we partake of the communion, the Bible in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And I hope everybody has been served. If you've not been served, just raise up your hand and the pastors and those who are waiting on us will serve you. Freedom, I did help here, my brother. <laughs> so on that night, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After saying a brief prayer in your heart, let's go ahead and partake of the bread in remembrance of the body. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup together. Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary to reconcile us back to you. We thank you for your body that was broken for our healing. We thank you for each and every person in this space, for each and every family represented here at Nairobi Chapel Karen. We bless you for your faithfulness that we've seen in the 26 weeks that have passed in this year, 2016, that has been a gift to us from you. We've partaken of the Holy Communion in faith that, Lord, regardless of how the six months have been, you are the one who knows what tomorrow holds. Father, our help come from you. So would you go ahead of us, one step at a time, making the crooked path straight, restoring where the enemy has stolen, healing where there's been woundedness, O Redeemer God. And even this morning, as you have reminded us through your servant, may you wash our tongues, that our tongues will be sources of blessings and not sources of curses. So I speak your peace and your blessing upon your people. That may you, God, bless us. Bless us, O King of all glory, in our going out. Bless us in our coming in. Bless us in our sitting. Bless us in our standing, O Redeemer God. May you surround us with the precious blood of the Lamb. Because we declare that no weapon pointed against us shall prosper. And any time that is raised against your people, we refute it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your peace that surpasses human understanding be the centerpiece of everything that we do. I now declare your blessing according to your instruction in Numbers. Numbers 6.
I request that we stand, even as I declare the blessing of the Lord upon us. After which I'll request our visitors to serve the tea first, and then they will come in front here and they'll meet our pastors. I'm being given the sign, just pass the, the cups at the end of the aisle and the ashes will pick them. So our visitors, please serve the tea first, then come in front here, I'll get to meet you. On the brochure, on the brochure, there's a telephone number. There's a telephone number. That is the official church number. Because we've said that we want to do pastoral visit. And we are not pressurizing anybody. But just in case you need to talk to any of our pastor, Pastor Box, Pastor Victor, Pastor Rosalind, Pastor Muzeo, if you call that number, then you will be connected to any of our pastors. One as if you will. And feel free to give us a call at any given time. That is an official number, so it will be on between 8 and 8. So 8 to 8, you can call the number there. But after that, you can then call our personal numbers. We are on call. And we will tell you that which pastor is on call every time. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace even as you step into your, a new week and to a new half of the year. And now turn to your neighbor and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Please greet the greetables at the Hagabu.